What's up YouTube fragrance family and friends? Tommy with Studio Sense here with another brand new fragrance release and review that was launched in 2021. What we're talking about today is a new fragrance from Jean-Paul Gaultier in the Le Mal line of fragrances called Le Mal On Board. To me, I think it's a missed opportunity because it could have been Le Mal Overboard because they've kind of gone overboard with that entire line of fragrances. And I'm a Lamal fan, so that's saying something. Lamal has had a ton of flankers, therefore flankers away. That's why that's on my thumbnail. It's a terrible dad joke, I know, but I couldn't help myself. But it's really true. There are a ton of flankers out there for Lamal. Some of them are derivative and some of them are actually pretty good. Is this one going to be one of those that's just going to fall by the wayside or is it the new summer banger for 2021? Also, if you guys like to win prizes, make sure to stay tuned after my first impressions. We're going to announce the winner of my massive sample giveaway. When we come back, we're going to answer that question and more, so stay tuned. Welcome back, guys. Today we're taking a closer look at the brand new Jean-Paul Gaultier release called Le Mal On Board. Because so we're talking about naval ships, you know, they got the whole sailor and navy thing going on because that's kind of a Jean-Paul Gaultier fetish. And I dig it. I dig it. It's pretty cool. I like those sailor stripes when it comes to fashion. I get why you would want to kind of hang on to that as kind of your thing. But Le Mal on board just doesn't seem very creative to me. But it's a name. Well, we know it's inside the can. Everyone has seen what the Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrances look like. But let's go ahead and check out that presentation anyway. really like this presentation. Now I say this each time that I review a Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrance, you don't open the can with a can opener. Everyone has already got the joke multiple times by now, you don't open it with a can opener, you pull it from the bottom just like that. Um, as you can see, this one is a bit dented. This actually came from Italy. You can tell it was shipped from a far away as it took you know, a couple weeks to actually get here. So it's kind of banged up. But I really like that very light blue metallic shine, the color. You've got silver for the porthole window. You've got white for the lettering. Normally with Lamal fragrances, they'll paint the bottle, but this is very similar to Le Beau, which is also just a solid color of glass. This glass is a solid blue color, and then the white stripes are painted on. That's the only paint that's on the bottle. I like that. It's a very nice look. As they say in the fashion industry, those lines are very clean. So the presentation is awesome. The most important question, of course, though, is what about that juice? Let's go over that note breakdown because this particular fragrance and this particular Lamal flanker is very simple. Lamal On Board by Jean-Paul Gaultier features notes of bergamot, geranium, and tonka bean. Christoph Renaud is the nose behind this fragrance. The idea behind the, the fragrance, what he was going for, he didn't want to reinvent the wheel, didn't want to deviate too far from the DNA of Le Mal, but he did want it to be different. And I think the formula is simple enough to where it recommends that. You've got that massively crowd-pleasing, mass-appealing bergamot that's in the open of most men's modern fragrances today, specifically the fresh fragrances. And geranium is a staple floral note that is in most modern men's fragrances as well. And the lone star, the lone fixative of this fragrance is tonka bean. Tonka bean not only completes, but it complements the trifecta of geranium and bergamot. It completes that scent triangle and gives it the sweetness and creaminess that every man's fragrance needs. I'm really curious about this juice, so let's pull the pin and get right to it. The pin is on every one of the Lamal flankers. It just prevents it from being pressed down during transit and, you know, sitting on the shelf, I guess. Gotta prime that bad boy. It seems to be spitting quite a bit. There we go. I can already smell a little bit of that tonka bean. Nice, nice, nice. 
this to me is what you really need in a clean, fresh, manly fragrance. Simplicity. Simplicity. This particular flanker is illustrating the point that more doesn't always mean better. Really nice. The way this opens is a very kind of lightly powdery, aldehydic, fresh bergamot so you get a little bit of citrus in the open but there isn't really a transition from the open the open is also the break so what you're getting primarily is you're getting this nice lightly powdery slightly balsamic obviously there's no balsamic notes in there but the combination of the bergamot and geranium gives it that kind of powdery edge and then you add tonka bean in there and it just creamies it up smooths it out quite a bit and throws in the sweetness that really makes it alluring. Very clean, fresh, lightly soapy, lightly powdery, and very palatable. It's interesting because I said this about a Banana Republic Icon fragrance recently. I think it was Linen Vetiver that I said reminded me of CH Men. Carolina Herrera for Men or CH Men. This actually reminds me more of CH Men than that. It's kind of that fresh, powdery, lightly aldehydic, but very clean. It's like opening a window, the sun streams in, and you're viewing a beautiful horizon in front of you. Uh, it's like translating that visual freedom into a smell and it translates into fresh, new, open possibilities. You know, like that Dixie Chick song, Wide Open Spaces, that's kind of what this reminds me of. So on board, it would make sense. It's gonna be an aquatic fragrance, right? You're on the sea, you're on a ship, you're traveling, so you're discovering. You can't get more wide open than the Pacific Ocean or any ocean. Geranium is almost like the all flower. It supports primary notes in and itself isn't necessarily a primary note, but what it's doing is it's taking components of tonka bean and when combined with tonka bean and a little bit of bergamot, it's got a very sharp, almost bracing side to it that's similar to juniper. Maybe a combination of like juniper and cypress, it doesn't smell exactly that way, but it has a facet about it that's very much like that. It's got that very fresh, bright, open, new, and clean. Again, I keep going back to wide open spaces because that's what it reminds me of. It's just one of those fragrances that you put on to feel good. Kudos to John Paul Gaultier for release and Christophe Renault for releasing a fragrance or creating a fragrance that makes you feel that way. It's not only clean, it's not only bracing, but it also makes you think of, you know, traveling discovering things while you're traveling. And especially for a fragrance that's only featuring three notes, that simplicity, to have that elegance in that simplicity, to have that intellectual quality in that simplicity, is a really nice attribute for a fragrance. And therefore, I think on board, La Mal on board is a win. La Mal on board features a lightly resinous facet as well. And that to me, is specifically for casual wear. It's not gonna be something you'll wanna wear with a suit and tie. It doesn't have a really refined quality about it. It's just a really nice, super clean, casual wear fragrance. You know, most Lamal fragrances are specifically spring and summer. That's where you're gonna best utilize this fragrance, but you can wear it year round. And in any situation that is casual, it's gonna be appropriate. I think this is gonna be one of those slow burns that people will slowly turn on to as it gets, as time goes on and people wear it in different situations like uh, Lamal itself, potentially. Well guys, that's a wrap on my first impressions of John Paul Gaultier's Le Mal On Board. I really like it. I think it's a great casual wear fragrance and I can't wait to wear it myself and give you guys a full on review. As promised, we're gonna announce the winner of my massive sample giveaway. I clicked the YouTube random comment picker. It picked the winner. I could have chosen someone else. I could have rolled the dice again, but I gotta stay true to the contest. The winner is Tits McGee. So thank you, whoever you are out there. You made me record myself saying the words Tits McGee, and I really appreciate it. If you do want to claim your prize, you'll have to reach out to me and send me an email to studiosense at gmail.com. Two words all jammed together, all lowercase, studiosense at gmail.com. Just let me know your address information, and I'll ship this huge box chock full of tons of samples. So congratulations, I hope you enjoy the samples. Make sure to reach out to me. For those of you that entered to win and didn't win, I got a ton of contests coming up in the future. You'll have more opportunities to win coming up. Guys, thanks so much for checking out today's video. As always, thank you so much for your support on my channel. I'm Tommy with StudioSense, and I'll see you tomorrow.